Yeah, yeah, you read the Quran? I've been reading for a month now. Come. I'm trying to read around my mind. I'm not just like reading the because I'm a bad consumer of knowledge, so you can see in this book, I've read through it and then I've highlighted like the bits of it and stuff like oh, that. I just okay. don't consume okay. knowledge very well. So okay. I'm like reading it slowly, so I'll go back and I'll read the start again and then go back through it a bit. Like, like I say, because I want to understand. I don't just want to read it and be like, oh, I've acknowledged it. Like I want to understand it and understand what it means. So I'll read something and then go and read the passage and stuff like that. Um, I told you I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, what, what, what's your current assessment at the moment? Uh, reading the Quran, what's the current themes that you find? Um... It's, it's the, the peacefulness that I associate with reading it, and stuff mm. like that. How I feel with reading it, and the message that it gives me. It's not something that I have to read and then can be applied a year later. It's like to take action on it now is the thing that resonates with me, being able to take action and improve myself and better myself in that aspect immediately and practice immediately. Yeah. But the reason that I've taken the shahada. Yeah. It's because I want to understand it. And yeah. Because for 18 years, I lived with no no one to talk about about Islam. Then I moved down here. Fair enough, my fair best mate is with Islam. So to change it like that, after being an atheist for 18 years, mm. is a big ass. Someone that my, my dad was a scientist and stuff like that. Yeah. So to come from that background is a massive contrast to you. Know I mean? so that makes sense what you're saying because um, one of the conditions of somebody taking their shahada to accept Islam is. Yakin, that certainty. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so we we don't want you to accept Islam. Exactly. We don't want you to accept Islam if you have some room of doubt. Yeah. We want you to be 100 percent certain. Yeah. 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 But I think, based on what I heard from you, um, can you can you think from the top of your mind, how much have you read the Quran? Like, what chapter are you upon? Oh, I couldn't. I couldn't tell you. Wasn't one of the books Oh, so you're on chapter 28. So the Qasas, chapter 28. So that's that's pretty a lot. Yeah. That's a pretty a lot of um, reading you've done with the Quran. Okay, so what, what, what conclusion have you made so far with the Quran? Because I think by that time, I think usually when people read like two, three books, yeah, yeah, two, yeah. two, three pages, yeah, yeah. it will sort of motivate them whether they want to carry on reading or not. They will just discard it if it's not interesting. But what's... What what stop it? Because I think by that time, I think the message of Islam would make sense to you. What stopped me is the physical evidence more than anything. I suppose I'm still waiting for that moment of this is it, I believe, but it's not come. So it's like having living off of evidence, like evidence as we see it now, as this is it, and I can prove it to you because it's happening right now. I can show you that it's happening right now not having that concrete evidence being able to visually see it like i can't see it and touch it it's tough for me to then get my head around so i mean that's like that's the only barrier other than that i love it and i love the way of life and stuff like that i love studying it to wrap my head around believing in something that i can't that is intangible or is it something that is that i'm consci consciously thinking is in my head it's tough for me to be agreeable with so I see where you're coming from. So what we say is that the Quran is the living miracle. Yeah, yeah. It is the greatest of all miracles. I Why? It. Well, because it's been kept for so long, it's not changed, and it was passed exactly. down from so long ago. It's just it's, real, it's yeah. preserved, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't you find that miraculous? <laughs> I do find that absolutely miraculous. But what you are, but what you're reading now is the tangible evidence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Which is I where think is the crossroads in my head. I think you answered your own question yeah, sure. because you're asking for tangible evidence for. For the miraculous, uh, for miracles, but you've also acknowledged at the same time that what you're reading is by itself a miracle because, as you mentioned, um, it's the preservation of the Quran. Now, I find it very amazing that Allah guarantees the preservation in chapter 15, verse 9. He says, Yeah, I can open for you the Quran. It says, yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, yeah. It says, Indeed, we have sent down the reminder of the Quran and it is upon us to preserve. So, just imagine this, how can, if this book is not from Allah, how can anyone make this confidence? How can anyone make that claim so much more confidence? Well, I read, and this is one of the things I want to say is that we've got to exist as all-knowing and all-powerful. 
he has to be above human, therefore the world wasn't created perfect or the world would have been God. And the reason that we can't picture God is because he's above our, our level of... Exactly, exactly. Our, our power is above our power. That, that's, that's, the, the, I like to pose some of these questions, and I did it last time, I posed some of the questions. Um, but yeah, the fact that you can believe, it's the only thing you can believe in, it's not tangible. So how, like the fact that God, it, the only way for God to exist is for him to not to exist in your mind, which is the fascinating thing to me, and it's another reason, it's another crossroad in my head that he, the only way he can exist is for us to not be able to see it. But I think Allah has left his signs of his existence. Yeah, yeah. You look around your own self, you look around the creation of the heavens and the earth, these are signs for people of understanding. It's what Allah says in the Quran. Uh, that verily, like, inna fi khalqi samawat wal ardi wa fi layli wa nahar. Allah says that verily, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, in the in the alter in the alteration of the night and the day, there are signs for those people who understand. So Allah has left signs. So if I was to give you, for example, look, this is rain, it's raining right now, isn't it? Yeah. If you see fo footprints, does that indicate that? Somebody must have traversed, right? Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to physically see yeah, yeah. to verify that somebody must have passed by. Yeah, yeah. So just just with that parallel example, Allah has left the Allah has left His signs of His Majesty, His signs of His sovereignty um, by our own existence, the animal kingdom, the the, the the human kingdom, the species and, yeah, yeah. and fish and seas and animals. So Allah has left traces of His own existence. Yeah, yeah. That's why when you read the Quran. The Quran is there to confirm your natural inclination. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. like everyone is born, like everyone is well reached to believe that there is a single creator that is responsible for the creation of everything and that we should worship him alone. So what the Quran does, the Quran just reminds you. It, it, it triggers yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. you. So if I give an example just to appreciate and thank you for taking out your time, I really appreciate it. Let's say suppose you, you want to move out of your house. And obviously you have to um, go through your dusty bags, etc. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden you, you found something that is quite curious. And then you blow the dust. No, 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 it's not true. You blow the dust and all of a sudden you see a toy that you used to play. But you've completely forgot. You completely forgot. Oh, I, I remember I played with this toy when I was five years old. But why did you forget? You forgot because you moved on with your life. You started to play PlayStation, then you start moving on, you know, um, entertainment, then school studies, etc. So the fact that when you read the Quran, it's like that. When you read the Quran, you would realize it's, 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 it's reminding you of something that you've already believed in, but it's clouded because, of, because you've been conditioned by the environment, by the society. Absolutely, I agree with that. Does that make sense? Does that example make yeah. sense? Yeah. So what the Quran, that's what the Quran is called reminder. It's there to remind because we humans... Quran, Quran means that which is recited. Okay. It's a recital. Okay. So we believe the, the primary transmission of the Quran is oral and then it was written down uh, during the time, during the lifetime of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So it's memorized by millions of people. And I find that miraculous because Allah mentioned so many times in one chapter, in chapter 54, that we have indeed made the Quran easy for remembrance and to understand. So is there anyone who will receive admonition? 1400 years has eclipsed. There are millions of non-Arabic speakers who have memorized the entire Quran as young as six years old. So imagine if we, if we bring all the religious scriptures together, the Bible, the Hindu scripture, the Quran, we burn all of this in the sea. The only religious scripture that will come in its original form is the Quran. Why? Because it's memorized. And we don't need the scholars to do that for us. We have our children, six-year-old children, who can do the job for us. Secondly, the, Allah gives the guarantee of the preservation. And even, even a very staunch enemy of Islam, by the name of Sir William Moore, he was a Scottish um, a critic of Islam. He even had to admit that for 1,200 years, Quran has been preserved without any change. Because if you look at the previous books, like the Bible, the Hindu scriptures, yeah, 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 it went through so many editions, so many versions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yet the Quran, we have one version. The same Quran that was revealed at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Yeah, yeah. So do you not find that as miraculous? That so what you're asking for tangible, you're holding this book right now, that is the miracle. True, very true. Let me see if I can find something to ask you. Not sure. out of, not out of sure, sure. Uh, anything other than interest. Yeah, sure. And I know that Sorad 
who uh, gave me the Quran and stuff like that, he, he loves these questions because he says they're always... Uh, I, I can't think of it, but he basically says... Like, Sarah Garvey are you talking about? Sorry? Sorry, I, I, I'm... Uh, Sorab, who gave me the Quran. Oh. He's just what you, you won't know him. Okay, okay. He, I thought, he's a, I thought he's a, you. No, yeah. no, no. He's at Amazon with me. So I oh. joined an apprentice with him. Moved out to London. Yeah, yeah. And um, he gave me. And whenever I. Because I always pose him questions, like philosophy questions, stuff like that. And he always says. Like, he always he always laughs and says that they're just like meaningless arguments. Like, so sure, sure, sure. Um, well, yeah, some of, And one of the ones. One of the things that always just. I can never get my head around this. How I get the idea of free will, and if we were all good, then we would be closer towards God. How can you say that God is all good when there's so much bad in the world? Oh, okay, I see. And I see what like you mean. Just yeah. One of the simple questions. Like, mm, mm. How can he be all, all good if he's bad? And I get we can't be all good because then we'd be closer to God than if we just had free will. But wouldn't us being, wouldn't us being all good? And all loving, but still not. If we were from the start of humanity, all good, we wouldn't be aware of what bad is anyway. I think you've answered, you've answered your own question. I think you've answered your own question. That, that's the Islamic understanding. Because what we say is we believe in Qadr. I think that's what you're talking about destination, right? Pre, uh, predestination. So yeah, we yeah. do believe that. That's one of the six articles of faith that we have to believe in the Qadr. We believe, we believe that Allah has, has written down, Allah has created. Allah has willed and Allah has Allah had pre-knowledge um, of determining everything. Yeah? But however, at the same time, Allah has given us the choice to do good or evil. So uh, our scholars have explained this, that Allah has two wills, two different types of will. So you have something called irada shara'iyah, which is a legislative will, and you have uh, irada kawniya, which is universal will. So his legislative will means that Allah commands only what is good to us, and if, and if the business from evil, yeah, okay. that's what Allah tells us. In Allah, um, sorry, I forgot the Arabic. That indeed Allah commands only that is good and yeah. to forbid evil. Okay. Yeah. So, for example, don't associate partners with with me. Don't associate partners with Allah. Be good to your parents. Be good to your fellow human beings. Do not murder. Do not kill. Yeah, yeah. So Allah has commanded us, but Allah, from His universal will, He allows good and evil to take place because Allah has given us the will. He's given us the choice. So we are some sort of that compatibilist. So we believe that Allah has determined, but at the same time, He's given us the free will. But even in the real world, if you do see someone committing murder, you're not going to say, you're not going to say that he has no responsibility. You'll say he's accountable. Otherwise, where's the question of justice? So um, this is something that we cannot, exactly. This is something that we cannot rationalize. We don't know how. It's among the secrets of Allah. We don't know the reality of it. But we believe that Allah has given us the choice. But at the same time, he's determined everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But you will not. But you will not doubt at all that you have no doubt at all that in the real world, you know, if if you do something that is wrong, that's that's upon you. Yeah. 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 Now you asked about if God is all good, if Allah is all good, why is they evil? Is that, that that's basically what you're asking. Yeah. So from Islamic understanding, it's very is interesting. Another, another thing, just follow on from that about predestination. If he's all knowing. He already knows all the actions that we're going to do. He created all of our actions. We believe in that. But at the same time, Allah has given us the will. So we're compatibilist. But that doesn't work. That, that's what I'm saying. This is among the secrets of Allah. We don't know the rationality behind okay, it. Okay, yeah. But you know for one sure that... But yeah, again, yeah. that's one of the things in my head. That yeah. You've always said my exact thought process of not converting. Yeah. Or is that right, reversing? Um, is in the fact of we just don't know. Like, yeah, we don't know. We yeah. just don't know. Like, it's no, no, no. It's, it's, yeah, it's a faith. Look, look we, we, like I said to you, Qadr, like, pre, like predestination yeah, yeah, yeah. that Allah has created good and evil, that's something that we do not know how. Yeah. How is it possible that we have the free will, but at the same time, He has determined everything. Yeah, yeah. We don't know how. Yeah. But that's one of the six articles of faith that we have to believe okay, in, in, yeah, in the Qadr, course, the good yeah. and evil. Now, you asked a very good question that if God is all good, why is the evil that's taking place? Here's the misconception. This is from a Christian, Christian perspective because they only say God is all good. However, we affirm that Allah has 99 names, but He has more names, but He, he only revealed to us 99 names, right? So, amongst His beautiful names is Al-Hakim, that He's the all-wise. 
Al Ghafur, he's all forgiven. Yeah, Al Adil, he's the just, right? So we believe that all goodness comes from Allah. But we believe that when Allah has created evil, there is goodness out of it. But we just don't know perceive. So for example, if you uh, Exactly. Yeah. yeah. In fact, Islamic scholars we define evil as absence of good, deprivation of good. And we believe that every evil that that takes place, every evil that takes place, that comes out of goodness. So, for example, if you read in chapter 18 of the Quran, is it like the person thinks that they're doing good? It's just the fact. What we say is, look, Allah has given us the moral responsibility, moral obligation to do good. Now, if Allah has decreed something evil to take place, it's still our moral obligation to prevent it. But Allah has decreed it. But we believe that behind that evil there is goodness. So sometimes we may see it, we, we may see the outcome of goodness, sometimes we may not see it. So for example, if you read the Quran, uh, in chapter 18, Allah narrates the story of Moses and al Khidr. Do you remember you came across this story? It's in the cave. The story, yeah. yeah. So that answers the so-called problem with evil because we don't find evil as a problem. For, for example, uh, Moses uh, was traversing, was traveling with Khidr and Khidr was given the knowledge by Allah and he was commanded by Allah to do certain action. One of the actions that he did, he killed the innocent boy. So of Moses, he said, how can you kill an innocent boy? You know, what did he do wrong? He's innocent. But then Khidr, he explained afterwards to Moses that this child will grow up to be tyrant and may deviate his parents from righteousness. Because we believe the ultimate goodness is Islam. To go to paradise. So Allah Azza wa He knew, He decreed that this child will be a disbeliever. So out of His mercy for His parents, the child was expired. And do you know what Allah says afterwards? Uh, do you know what Khidr says afterwards? He said that Allah has substituted the parents with another child who will be good to them. So sometimes we don't see, we don't. Sometimes we don't see um, the fruits out of that evil. Like for example, I'll give you a personal example. I was made redundant in 2019. Before, uh, before the COVID, and I thought, wow, like COVID times, you know, it's time of uncertainty. I'm applying jobs, and I'm, I'm, I'm receiving no response. I hated my previous job. It was like a cut for environment in finance, right? Then I started to question. Look, I always had faith in Allah that I know Allah. You made me redundant. You made me jobless, but I know there is goodness out uh, out of it. Now He's given me a job that I'm enjoying, and I see the fruits of it. Now I appreciate that Allah has taken me away from that job so that now he's given me a job that I'm enjoying. So sometimes we don't, sometimes we see the results, we see the goodness out of it, sometimes we don't see it. Yeah. I know it's difficult, I know it's difficult, but it's... it's, it's the thing, like, like you say, of, we just can't comprehend. His yeah, we can't comprehend, yeah. Like that. yeah. Like it's just that, yeah. that is the struggle for yeah. to wrap my head around as it is. But I wouldn't say. But but would you agree with me that that's not that's not a determining factor to doubt Allah's existence? Doubt. Yeah. For me and myself, is, I don't. I think it just comes down to like, like you say, of not having the what we said about. It. I'm just going to keep going to it. Just, just and the most important know, like, thing is the most important thing is just to uh, add something to this. Yeah, yeah. This life is a test. Yeah, of yeah, so Allah says Allah says It is he who created death and life To test which of your best in deeds So this life is a test for the hereafter So Allah has created good Allah has created evil As a test for us okay. Otherwise if, 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 this is a, if, this, if this world If our life is full of goodness Then where is the test? Yeah, yeah, and I, I get that, which yeah. is what I say about, um, yeah, and this, this so, that's so, the same thing, yeah. just think about it, okay, so yeah. you have, you have these existential questions that you brought up, and I really appreciate you, you asked that question, from an atheistic paradigm, or someone who's not religious, how can they, how can they justify a child born with cancer, how can they answer, because from Islamic perspective, we say this, that the reason why the child has got cancer, not because he's bad, not like Christians who say, this child is born as a sinner. No, we say this child is innocent, but the child got cancer as a test for the parents. But the child is innocent. So how would, how would an atheist answer that question to the child? What, give some, uh, what do you call it, some, uh, you know, some uh, science. We're just made out of atoms and elements. I mean, how sad is that?
So think about that. Yeah, you can put plenty to think about. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. But if you look at the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look into yeah, his claim. Yeah. I'm going to like yeah. say, I'll carry on studying. Yeah. Carry on reading. Thank you. Appreciate your time. No problem. What's your name? Uh, Elliot. Elliot. Right, Han. Nice to meet Elliot. Thank Ask Allah to guide you to Islam. Thank okay, you for right. taking out your time. Really appreciate it. We're always yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Rayhan is here. Yeah. Me yeah. is here. So. Yeah. I'm here every Wednesday. I hope I, hope I answered all of your questions. Look. Yeah, if, you, you did. Thank you very much. Yeah. No problem. Really no problem. It. And I hope you clarified that side. Yeah. Look after yourself. Yeah. Look after yourself. Oh, can I grab one? I'll, someone gave me one of these and I lost it. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Take care, no problem. Have a good evening. Look after yourself. Uh, come, come, come. No, 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 you came here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I hope uh, all of you are doing well, inshallah. So, alhamdulillah, myself and uh, Brother Azizu, um, we spoke to uh, Elliot, a um, very sincere individual. He's, you know, open, learning about Islam. And he's already read the Quran, hasn't he, to yeah, a certain yeah, extent. Yeah. So, may Allah guide him to Islam. I mean, he was asking about Qadr, etc. Yeah. So, we Muslims, we have to be very careful when we, yeah, Qadr, um, yeah. because we can't rationalize Qadr, no, but we just give, we just explain Qadr right. that is explained from the Quran and the Sunnah. So, um, what's your thought about it? And yeah, peace. Yeah, Allah Allah said, "Kul in malain wa inda Allah." The knowledge is within Allah, and Qadr is some of the things that are unseen. And whatever Allah tells us, we tell them. Yeah. And there are things in the Qadr we don't know how Allah does it, so yeah. we leave it like that. Exactly. We say Allah knows best, but of course. Uh, we know that uh, we have the free will and at the same time Allah also destined things yeah. and how it reconciles is Allah knows best. Exactly. So we leave exactly. it like that and I think all we can do is make dua. Yeah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. to guide yeah. Elliot to Islam, open yeah. his heart, soften his heart to Ameen. Islam. Ameen. Uh, I mean, and please make dua for, yes. for us as well. Yes. May Allah Azza wa accept our efforts, may Allah forgive uh, any mistakes that we've committed in yeah. our da'wah. Um, Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum.